What's up guys, it's your girl Claire Huxtable 2.0 and I am here tonight with a sort of impromptu discussion about the Amber Geiger um, both of John case. In case you don't know, Amber Geiger was found guilty of murder today and I'm going to discuss the verdict and my feelings about the ever-present issue of police brutality and the killing of unarmed people of color and unarmed people in general. Okay. So, quick background, Amber Geiger was a Dallas police officer who mistakenly, so she says, um, shot and killed a 26-year-old neighbor of hers, both of Jean. Um, she claims that she was mistaken about it being her apartment and also that she thought both of Jean was a burglar in her apartment. From the beginning, the whole story stank of lies and bullshit, but we'll get more into that as we discuss further. So during the trial, of course, she probably hired the best defense attorney that you could. As a former criminal defense attorney, I don't know where she would have found him at, but apparently you got enough money, you can buy you some innocence, or so she thought she could. So two things that the defense attorneys tried and I'm gonna give them effort for, they tried it, the Castle Doctrine, which in layman's terms means, you have a right to protect your home from people coming into your home to do you harm, and those that you love harm. That's the basis of the Castle Doctrine. Also, stand your ground laws. I mean, okay. So, stand your ground, of course, we've heard of stand your ground before, you have the right to stand your ground and protect yourself from harm and danger. Neither one of those scenarios applied in this case. I don't know how the defense put that defense on with a straight face because I could not have done it. As a, pre, as a prior criminal defense lawyer, I couldn't have done that with a straight face to a jury of Amber Geiger's peers. So, issue number one, the Castle Doctrine. How are you invoking the castle doctrine in someone else's castle? That's not what the doctrine is for. You cannot, and God bless the defense attorneys because they really did try to make this defense fly. Like, I can't just bust into someone else's house, kill them dead, and then be like, oh God, the castle doctrine. No, sweetheart, that's the doctrine of breaking and entering and murder. That's a whole nother set of circumstances. Like. So of course, as many of them do when they're in this circumstance, she got on the stand and she cried and like the alligator tears just was like, oh my God, I feared for my life and then I feared for my life and then I feared for my life. Sis, I can't even call you sis because you're like, you're trash. So I've never in my life heard of anyone say, I was in fear for my life so I approached the person that was putting the fear upon me. I mean, if you guys have ever heard it, then, you know, jump down in my comments and let me know. But in the midst of all these alligator tears and woe is me and me helpless defense that woman, like I was in fear of my life of an unarmed black man. Let me tell y'all something about this fear of your life. Y'all gonna stop faking it and trying to make it something bigger than it is. Because every time police are called on people of color, it's because you're fearing for your life or you're just trying to be a law-abiding citizen. And that always ends up with us being dead on arrival, okay? I need y'all to stop that. Quit faking the fear for your life. No one's buying it. And luckily, this jury has some common sense and they didn't buy it either. But I'm gonna tell you why I think the jury decided how they did. So first of all, like I said, the, the story is complete bullshit. And I can't believe she even got on the stand with all them lies and all them tears. First of all, if you don't have to get on the stand, don't get on the stand. Somebody gonna eat you alive, whether it's the prosecution or the defense attorney. They're gonna eat your lunch. As a defendant, don't get your ass on the stand. You have a right not to say shit. So please do yourself a favor and don't say shit. But since you got on the stand, want to plead your case and cry, the jury fixed your ass. So here's some of the details behind why she shot and killed this unarmed black man who was chilling in his house, his castle, 
but that's neither here nor there now that she's been found guilty. So apparently Amber Geiger is a piece of work, honey, because on the way to her apartment, she's sitting there texting her boo about laying up later on that evening or this weekend or whatever. Guess who the boo is? Her patrol partner. Amber. So you getting a D from your partner? Your coworker? He got your mind like that? You so discombobulated that you don't know where you logging in or swiping the key card for or opening the door to because you crack your power with the dick. Amber. So I take issue with that for a couple of reasons. As a female police officer, sis, you already know they think we gonna be on our backs all the way to the top. Could you not be on your back all the way to the top? Secondly, if you gonna do it, can it not be your patrol partner, bitch? Like, have some class. And if you really wanna be on your back all the way to the top, can I get you to screw the captain? The commissioner? Can you not lowball? So you should be shaming yourself because you done shot this whole unarmed black man behind some partner dick? Come on, sis. I can't even call you sis because you trash. Again. But anyway, and so they show these like explicit text messages and apparently, honey, they were about to get it in right after she killed this whole person. So, and this is going to be a really short um, discussion about it. Uh, like I said, I am super pleased that this jury finally has some sense. And Amber Geiger faces up to 99 years in prison. And honestly, give it a full 99. If I could give it a needle, I would. She lucky. She lucky it only carries up to 99 years in prison. And I'm surprised because Texas like to kill everybody. So you would get the needle for some craziness just by being in Texas. But 99 years of do, she look like she a strong 30. Um, well, she like a strong 45 in the face after going through the trial of her life and doing all that crying. But um, yeah, sis, you ain't coming out of there. I hope they give you the 499. The jury did well on the verdict. I need them to be equally as vigilant to give you your sentence, the one you deserve, bitch. You should have been gave up your badge and gun before you even shot an unarmed man. You should have gave your badge and gun up because you like to screw your partner. Ladies, if you're in a male dominated field and you want to sweep your way to the top, I need you to have a little bit more ambition than that. Don't screw your coworker. Screw your boss. But if you're not hell bent on screwing your way to the top, I need you to check your feelings and your vagina and do your job. Especially when your job involves you handling a weapon and protecting and serving the Commonwealth of America. If it's even the Commonwealth, the country, basically. Don't go grab a gun. If you scary, don't grab a badge if you steadily in fear. Because let me tell you something. Your fear costs lives. And I am tired of everyone in that position that you're in, Amber, crying and claiming you were in fear for your life. He was unarmed. He didn't even have a chance to stand up and see who the hell you were before you pop two rounds at him. Where the fear at? But you're claiming on the stand while you cry and think somebody will give a shit about your emotions. You know, you're crying because you're going to jail, honey. And that's what I have a problem with. I have no problem with law enforcement. I know it's a tough job. I know it's a dangerous job. But you put the badge on. You got the gun. You in the uniform. Check your jitters before you go busting in somebody's house and busting a cap in them. So that's all I got. I apologize. I got a little heated because this issue has been getting on my nerves ever since 
Trayvon Martin and George Zimmer Zimmerman Punk Gans wasn't even a real police officer. But since then, it's been too, like, it's been too constant. It's been too constant. Y'all just be shooting people, kids, mentally disabled, the deaf. You just shoot first and ask questions later. But Dylan Roof, you took for a hamburger. Yeah, I'm, I'm over it. I'm over it. And hopefully this guilty verdict will put a big ass halt to all this fear for your life shit. Once you find out now that juries are actually handing down guilty verdicts on your ass, I bet you go back to the police training manual then. I bet you remember which side your gun is on as opposed to your taser, Oscar Grant. Tamir Rice, Philando Castile, Sandra Bland, Mike Brown, Alton Sterling. This verdict is for all men who had their justice pushed to the side. And regardless, you got what you deserve. And I'm proud of the jury. And I was proud to see that black sister on the stand, on the uh, judge's bench. Even though she had nothing to do with the verdict, I know she was doing a praise dance to hand down that shit to you. I bet you'll stop shooting first and asking questions later now. And so y'all don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my video and my channel. You can hit me up on Facebook at Claire Huxtable 2.0, Instagram at Claire underscore Huxtable underscore 2.0, and also YouTube as Claire Huxtable 2.0. Share with your friends, share with your coworkers, share with your boo. I don't really care. So, because I love everybody. I love you all. But anyway, y'all have a good night, and I'll see you guys later on during the week.